But yeah, I should have just went to school to get teacher. Yard. Right now I am making some breakfast and it is Monday and it is a rainy day and I'm just gonna take it slow today. Um, I've taken off work for the next couple weeks just to come back down and be leveled out and studying and you know, cause I don't wanna overwork myself with work and like, cause sometimes I'll go to work and then by the time I get home from work, I'm like already very tired after the 12 hour shift and wanna go to bed at a decent time to wake up on time for work the next day there has been like a couple of times where I woke, like I I woke up late and then I was late to work and so like I definitely don't want to like stress about work work is not important right now obviously money is important but I want to prioritize my studies before everything else so taking off for the next couple of weeks just so I can focus um, went to the gym this morning and as you guys know I'm still dog sitting um, the dogs are so cute these cutie little dogs Ginger's like, play with me, play with me, play with me. She's just a puppy, but that other dog is very, very patient with her. Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm about to make me some breakfast. Go steady. did some like simple studying. I went over delegation processes and um, ethics. So those are like all the ethical legal principles such as like uh, autonomy, justice, fidelity, veracity, all, all that stuff you need to know just to know. Um, advanced directives and stuff like that, living will and knowing all that stuff because you get a, f a couple questions about things like that and they're just things that you need to know and should be knowledgeable about and also like processes over chest tubes and stuff which I reviewed that a lot doing Mark K's notes because like he kind of like ingrained that and he I, I mean I feel like I know that but I went ahead and went over it again just in case um, just because it's good to re you know repeat certain things and write them down so I went ahead and did that and um Another thing that I did was also review delegation to like RN, UAP, LVN, like the certain things that you can delegate. You can't delegate like assessments and reinforcements and teachings to um, UAPs, but to LVNs, they can do routine procedures such as like um, tube feeds. They can't do IV meds, they can only do PO meds, like certain things like that. I went over that because I often forget like delegation stuff. And those are easy 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 um concepts concepts that like it would be silly to get wrong if you just didn't review them so i reviewed those and what else 
else. But pretty much it was just like the chest tube stuff that was like really important and also the ethical principles because I often get those mixed up. I don't know why I get these terms mixed up a lot of the time, especially between like non-maleficence I know was not doing any harm. Um, but I oftentimes get, um, I think veracity mixed up. Veracity, which is telling the truth and then Fidelity, which is being faithful to your patient, like doing what you say you're gonna do. But like, I don't know, sometimes I get those mixed up, so I need to go ahead and review those again and do my questions over those just to make sure I get them out the way. Um, and I think I'm also gonna do two more lectures today um, from NCLEX High Yield just because um, I kinda wanna like get them out of the way and do more practice questions and I've got nothing but time on my hands. So I might as well just do them, get them out of the way and do practice questions over those. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a break, take my dogs for a walk. It's been raining all morning, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the dogs on a walk to probably take them to the park so they can run around for a little bit before it starts raining again because I think it's gonna be raining like all week. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of the way and then do some practice questions, probably have some lunch and then start my next lecture. Just got back from taking the dogs on a walk. Now I am going to put some of this chicken um, out so I can defrost it and have some chicken and probably like some cauliflower or something for lunch yeah, I'm actually gonna have some chicken and like this quinoa thing veggies and grains. I got these from Target the like stuff like this is like really good and easy for lunch, so I Don't like actually cooking for lunch. So this is what I'm gonna eat I'm gonna put that in the microwave go ahead and defrost a piece of this chicken so I can sear it sear it up eat it eat it up And it's gonna be great this Chicken is huge. This chicken is as big as my head. My daughter's name is Lillian. She's two years My hand is tired and I am tired and I have been studying it feels like all day it's 8 30 like it's just very time consuming especially writing down all my incorrect answers and it's kind of annoying but you know what I have to do it I have to focus on the things that I keep getting wrong and not the things that I know and I think that's one thing that sets me um, I think that's one thing that I can identify that I didn't do well the first time. When I was trying to focus on my studies the first time around, I definitely did reinforce the things that I did know. And I was like, okay, I'm doing good on this, doing good on this, this is great. Um, and like, I felt like I knew everything I needed to know. I focused a lot on critical care. I'm like, they're gonna probably hit a lot on critical care when that is not the truth. Like it focuses on your weaknesses and if you're not doing well with delegation, guess what? You're gonna keep getting delegation. If you're not doing well with prioritization, guess what? You're gonna keep getting prioritization. So that is like one thing I'm focusing on and like as much as it sucks, I'm gonna keep writing down all of my incorrects and all of the rationales. Um, I was actually kind of frustrated with myself because as you guys can see, my last set of 40 that I did, the average peer score was 61 and I got a 57. So like seeing scores like that gets, seeing scores like that gets a little like discouraging because I'm like, what the fuck? I'm doing less than the average and I feel like that's never a good thing. And yeah, it's a little frustrating, but you know what? I'm just gonna keep practicing and keep doing it, keep doing what I need to do. So this last section that I did, I focused on skills, prioritization, safety, and infection. 
um, delegation, assignment delegation. And it looks like the ones I keep getting wrong is safety and infection control. So like, and also some delegation that I keep getting wrong, but like most of them are safety and infection and delegation. So like, this is stuff that like we don't necessarily think about every single day, especially when we're in nursing school. Like, what kind of precautions are we gonna implement for this specific patient? And so definitely remembering droplet precautions like rubella, uh, influenza, pertussis, and all those kind of things that are droplet precautions. I definitely need to remember that stuff. Um, bacterial meningitis and diphtheria and stuff like that. And then the airborne precautions, I always remember that because it's MTV, MTVs. So measles, TB, and um, varicella and shingles, disseminated herpes zoster or shingles is also airborne precaution. And then like contact precaution, I always remember like skin stuff and um, uh, blah, 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 anything with diarrhea and stuff like that. So it's mainly just like the droplet stuff that I need to like make sure I get, get down 100%. Because these are like little things that I don't need to be getting wrong with my hand clicks. Like these are simple things that I should not keep getting wrong. So sucks, but you know what? I'm calling it a day. I'm going to be done for the night. Probably going to watch a movie or something. Kind of want to get some ice cream, but I don't feel like leaving. I don't know. Kind of bored. I need a new environment or something i get out of these four walls i might go get me some ice cream i'm not sure yet <laughs> we'll see tell me why i missed my therapy session again it's driving me insane simply because i forgot to remind myself write it down put it on my calendar put it in my phone i just scheduled it and then like this is the second time i missed it and i've been needing this therapy session so I'm a little frustrated with myself again. And I feel like that's another reason why I needed it. I'm not making excuses for myself, but like I'm finding difficulty in completing like the simplest tasks, doing like the littlest things. And so, I don't know. Anyway, so I went ahead and scheduled a, another therapy session next week. And obviously I don't know if there's like penalties and stuff for continually missing. I've already missed two sessions. I can't keep wasting my therapist's time like that. Like the fuck, she ain't gonna take me serious. So, anyway, I scheduled another one for next Friday. Went ahead and put it in my reminders so my phone can remind me. I just got done studying. I went through some more stuff. I kept getting like simple precaution things wrong. So like I reviewed that again today. I just kind of went over like, wrote down some more incorrect rationales and incorrect answers and stuff like that. Just like the basic things that I do every day. Plan on listening to another lecture when I make it back to the house, just to study a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna take a break. I went to White Rhino. I like that coffee shop. It's a coffee shop in Dallas. I like it. It's pretty big. It's pretty quiet and serene. And y'all know I kind of like that like mellow kind of vibe. So I really like this place because it's big, it's spacious, and 
everybody like literally comes to just work like nobody's there to like you know hang out and be loud everybody's there to just work and be quiet and be mellow so I really like that place um, but I also got a call from a hospital that I recently just applied to and she was calling to tell me that she sent me an offer letter um, for that position that I just for the Nero floor that I just um, applied to and I honestly told her like we went back and forth before about really wanting to be in the ER and I was telling her when I found out that I failed my NCLEX we were in communication and she's like she's not like the hiring but she's over like residencies and stuff like that so we were already in communication over like why well, I really want ER that's like my number one and I'm not sure if I want to wait till February so I will start applying to other positions however like if I get closer to the next residency start date which residency has already opened for February like they started taking applications already and I reapplied to the ER again um, and so she was really aware of that and then when I started applying for residency positions in October just so I can get in the door sooner you know start working sooner as a nurse um, she sent me like all these other positions and she was like oh well this unit wants to interview you and I interviewed with them and they gave me an offer and so she was just calling to follow up with that and I was just telling her like I'm really not sure I'm really not 100% I don't want to take the position when I know someone else might want it more than me and so she was like I'll just reach out to the manager of that unit and let them know that you're still kind of like weighing out the odds because you really do want ER but you do want to work sooner but like yeah so like you're still figuring it out so um, I did not give them an answer yet just yet because I'm still trying to figure it out and she was like you know go ahead and reach back out to me after you take your next NCLEX let me know the results and like see what you plan on doing and so yeah <laughs> well, I've decided to go up the street to this little market to get some ice cream balls they're called little mochi balls but the store closes at seven o'clock and it's already like 6 55 so let's see if they're open and then i'm going to spend some time by the pool reading a little book only place that i've been able to find these mochi balls the ones like they're like mango is at this specific market so hopefully they didn't shut down the i mean i don't know I, I feel like they're gonna be closed because they're like a small little personal market just like in this neighborhood But it is literally 658 and I'm at a red light. I ain't gonna make it. I ain't gonna make it I just wanted to get these mochi balls. That's all I wanted to get and if they are not open I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't think they're gonna let me in I'm surprised that they even let me in because it was like exactly seven o'clock but I kind of just like slid up in there real quick ran to the back because I knew exactly where they were Um, but it was like the perfect location of where I want to be in Dallas, but 
everywhere else is usually very, very expensive, and I kind of found a good deal, but when you do find a good deal, you compromise on other things. So I just need to keep thinking about it a little bit more, but now I'm at a coffee shop. Um, this is a Shenzhen, and me and my nursing school friends used to always come here to stay. But went ahead and got the cardamom latte, which is so good. Good morning. Good morning, loves. It is Thursday. Happy Thursday. I just got back from walking the dogs. Um, and I really need to start studying today. I really didn't study yesterday. I don't think I did anything yesterday. Um, because I was like kind of consumed with um, like looking at this apartment and doing all that stuff. So... Uh, Today, I am focusing on getting my work done early. So I'm done by like four o'clock right now. It's 11.30, well about to be 11.30. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make me some breakfast. I, I don't know why my days have been starting a lot later because I woke up this morning at like 8.30, but like chilled for a little bit, took the morning really, really slow. So I think that's why, cleaned up a little bit this morning. I think that's why, um, but anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and make me some yogurt, some fruit, probably some eggs and spinach. And also, Selling Orange County just came out, so I really wanna watch it, but I also don't wanna have it on while I am studying because I want it to be like, you know, complete focus while I'm studying. Um, but yeah. before two o'clock and I've done a couple more lectures and now I'm going to actually sit and do my practice questions as if I am sitting for the NCLEX. So I'm gonna get rid of all distractors. I'm gonna put my phone away. I'm going to probably not have my camera out. Um, well, I might record a little bit. No, actually I'm not going to because I wanna completely just like focus and hone in on like taking it almost similarly to the NCLEX exam day so that I get used to like doing this, you know, by the time it comes again. So I'm about to go use the bathroom real quick. I'm not even allowed to wear hats, so I'm gonna take my hat off. I remember the day of NCLEX, I just had like a long sleeve um, shirt on because I wasn't sure if I could wear sweaters or something, so I just wore long sleeves. I didn't have a hat, so I'm gonna take my hat off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my browser and stuff open, go use the bathroom, and then get to it. Make sure I do um, my four sets of 40, and I'm just gonna do them um, a five break in between each 40 questions and like keep doing it. I think last time I took my NCLEX, it took me a little over two hours, so I wanna hopefully, you know, do around the same time. I feel like that was like a good time limit, but also it's not a freaking rush it's not a race it's just you know i need to make sure that i understand the content and make sure that i'm choosing the right answers based on all the options that i'm giving so i don't want to try to treat it like a race i don't have to get it done in 45 minutes or an hour or whatever 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 i need to get it done as fast as i can i just need to make sure i'm answering the right questions in the time that i'm allotted and which 
we have four hours to take this exam. So I'm gonna take my time, make sure I, you know, do everything like I'm supposed to. But like I said, I'm gonna go use the bathroom real quick, come back and set myself up, turn my phone off, and get ready. That is put away, this is put away, this is put away. Camera is going off. I will let you guys know how it goes um, when I'm done. So, the time is now almost 5.30. It is 5.16 and I am tired of doing practice questions and I don't want to study anymore today because I've given it a lot of hours today, but I did all right overall doing the um, four sets of 40. Um, and I tried to do it all in one sitting and just getting up every um, 40 questions for five minutes to walk around, take a break, go to the bathroom, and then come back, sit back down for another 40 questions. And the first time I did my assessment, so I pretty much just like opened my iPad and did this, if you guys can see it. Like I pretty much just wrote A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, F for like every single question. I had to make like little notes here and there like we're looking for the wrong answer here or we're looking for the right answer or priority question. And I wrote those things down just so I can remember what the question was asking me overall. Because like I find myself sometimes if I just go through the questions not necessarily writing down what they're looking for forget like what they're looking for and I have to read the questions like five more times so I would just do that write like what they're looking for next to a b c d e I go backwards so I would read e first if that was wrong I would cross it out I would read d if that was right I would circle it I would read c if that was right I would circle it if I would read b and if it wrong I would cross it out and that's just how I did almost every single question like some questions were really simple and I didn't have to do that but overall my first time, which I am not excited about, I feel like my score keeps getting lower and lower, which is frustrating to me because initially when I first started with Archer, like I felt like I was doing so great and now I feel like I'm doing worse. Even though I keep scoring higher than the peer overall peer score, I feel like my scores overall have like declined and I'm like not feeling good about that. But whatever it is, what it is. So my first 40, the peer score was 51 and my overall score was 53. The second one that I did, the peer score was a 49 and my score was a 55. And then the third one that I did, the peer score was a 58 and I did a 63. And then the very last one, which I am not good at longevity and pushing through these exams, I always do bad on the long stretch and I think that's what really, you know, gets me out of the game because like, I could do really well if I learn how to, you know, go at longer times at doing these questions, but I'm just not, I don't have the stamina for it. And last, the average peer was 51 and I scored a 50. So I scored below the average, which was like not good in my eyes, but it is what it is. That's just what I did today. And honestly, I'm so tired, but during one of my breaks, I did check my phone um, and I had a few missed calls and a few messages and stuff like that. But one girl had a message me and this was someone that I had met previously like after I filled my NCLEX and like I got a lot of messages from people like, oh, it's okay, I filled mine too. Like I feel the same way as you, like, but we'll, you know, get through it or whatever. But this one girl specifically, oh my God, I love her. She sent me this great message and it kind of just made me feel like, oh my God, I can definitely do this because sometimes I definitely do feel like well, what if I fail again? Like, what if I have to retake this exam five times? Like, there are people that have been there. What if I have to retake this exam so many times to where I just, like, no longer want to be a nurse? Like, what if that happens and I can't help but to think those things sometimes, even though I don't want to? It definitely, like, contributes to me being very anxious about this exam and, like, feeling like I can't do it. But she messaged me today out of nowhere. She was like, I thought I'd give you an update. Took my NCLEX again and I passed. Um, she took, she used Archer and she said, totally a change of speed from the last time. I can tell that you're putting in all the work and you got it this time around. It sounds corny and I didn't believe it at first. But uh, what mainly helped this time around was taking time taking her time, stopping to do some deep breathing every once in a while to calm the nerves and heart rate because brain fog and anxiety is real. And I was like, yes, girl, it is. 
um, and rereading the everything at least three times. I swear my first NCLEX made me feel so, so scared, but this time I left feeling so confident, which I never expected. I got 88 questions, and so don't let going past 75 make you anxious. Keep going. You got this. And I messaged her, and I was like, girl, you don't even know how much I need this message today because I, for real, like today as I started taking my exams or, you know, my practice NCLEX and my set of 440s, I like after that first one and I was like what the heck like my score just keeps going down I got really discouraged like to the point where I like started to feel like I was feeling again during the NCLEX and very nervous and like yeah like what if I won't be able to do this and you know going down that slippery slope of all the things that you shouldn't think um so I told her I was like you don't even know how much I need this message first of all Freaking congratulations, because yes, ma'am, you're a nurse, period. Like, I can't wait to be able to say that. And I'm so proud of you. I'm like, you definitely deserved it, but thank you so much for sending me this message. Long story short, that's how the message went. Honestly, like, let's just talk about how toxic it is being in nursing school, getting out of nursing school to take the NCLEX and then actually being a nurse. Like, this whole profession is honestly, I don't know why we choose this life. But that's why I definitely understand that it has to be a calling and that's why I know it is for me because like this whole journey has not been fun. Like it definitely has not been fun and sometimes I'm like, I don't even know why I'm doing this, period. I should have just went to school to be a teacher or something. Long story short, we're here, we're doing it and we're gonna keep going. And I'm so proud of her. She passed her NCLEX and now she's a freaking nurse. You get it, girl. You get it. And congrats to everybody else who is a nurse too. And I'm about to watch some selling Orange County and also write down all of my incorrect answers and rationales, but I'm just gonna do that passively as I'm watching Selling Sunset because period, I'm so excited to watch the new season. Married man. Not okay. Not okay. And putting up all the noise. Oh, she does process her mind and I respect this show and then, you know, is great for my wife and myself, it's just not something that I need to be around and I'm just gonna separate myself from it. You shouldn't have to remove yourself from right now. She, 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 we want you there over her. Like, I'm not even like a drama filled person in person, but like I like watching it on TV because I don't have any drama in my life. So honestly, I think I like in, like I enjoy watching other people's drama on TV. Like I love reality TV. I love keeping up with Kardashians. I love selling sunset. It's perfect. Okay, and honestly, if you watch, if you have watched Selling OC, initially I thought that Alex Hall was like sweet woman, blah blah. blah but then she reminds me of Chris Shell initially. But if you watch Selling Sunset and Selling OC, if you watch Selling Sunset, you know that Chris Shell was kind of like, mm, all along wasn't like the sweet girl. Like she wasn't this perfect woman. Like that was like just so sweet and innocent. And that's the vibe that I'm getting from Alex Hall. Like, girl, I like you, but you're, mm, you're a little shady, I feel like. She's shady. She's cute, she seems sweet, she's nice, but she's shady. She's like only here to protect her own butt. So no, it's a no for me. Two blonde women, the, the other Alex's, Alexandria's, they remind me of like high school clicky girls. Like I really am not into it. I like the other girl. I like the black girl because she just sticks to herself. She's like, I did not come out here for the drama. I came here to make money and make a better life for my kids, period. Get your money, sis. Um, Kayla? She's on some other stuff. This is not, this is not too hard to handle. Kayla's over here trying to get with people's husbands and it just ain't it. And then she keeps crying about stuff. Like I definitely understand that you're new to this game. You feel like you really want to like prove yourself and blah, 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 but like prove it, prove yourself. Like put on your big girl pants, put on your big girl boots, strap them up and get to work. You know what I mean? Good morning, happy Friday. I think it's Friday. Um, today I have my very first therapy session. Pretty excited. I pretty much had the opportunity to uh, customize my therapist um, with better help. So I'm really excited and I'm gonna give you guys an update. Once our therapy session is get done, I feel like I have a lot of things that I need to talk about, a lot of things that I need to get off my chest. I can't wait to tell you guys all about better help, how our first session went. 
after it goes. It's exactly nine o'clock, so she'll be logging on here in a second. Just getting to know more about you. Okay. Um, getting to know about some of the things that you are seeing around and the things that you want to work on. Um, we'll probably talk about some of your expectations. What are you hoping to achieve? You know, what's the end game for you in therapy? today which went really well and I'm so glad that I got the therapist that I did get um, so like here's kind of how it works with BetterHelp so many of you guys might not know but I did announce in my last video that I was starting therapy like doing a little catch-up with me or whatever and I did start my first therapy session this week I had previously like I kept forgetting to show up to my other therapy sessions like I had two previous therapy sessions but I would just forget to write them down and then like I would wake up the next morning and I was like I missed my therapy session because it would send like a notification like hey your therapist is waiting for you <laughs> and I was like oh my god my therapist is gonna hate me but I did go to my therapy session and it felt so good to finally go to therapy and get some things out even though it was just our introductory um, appointment or whatever I was feeling matcha vibes I got a ice matcha with coconut milk and cold foam. I don't know if you guys know, but I have been using therapy with BetterHelp. And I found BetterHelp actually a few months ago because I was like seeking therapy when I was in nursing school. And it was just a lot, a lot of money, but now things kind of worked out to where I can use therapy. All in all, I'm so glad that I'm able to use it now. And so pretty much how it works is you get to basically customize your own therapist. So based on the things that you value in a therapist you get to put all those things so I specifically as a black woman I wanted to put that I had a woman of color as my therapist just so we can relate to certain things and although we don't talk about these things every single therapy session it's just better sometimes to have a woman of color being your therapist as a woman of color and that's just in my opinion um, I previously have had a therapist who was not and she was great but just personal preference I did want a woman of color to be my therapist and so I do have a woman of color who is my therapist and she is amazing she's great honestly I love like even meeting her today for the first time so you kind of customize your therapist as to what you want them to be if you want them to be a woman of color if you want them to have these specific views like there's just certain things I knew I wanted her to be a woman and I knew I wanted her to be a woman of color doesn't mean that I wouldn't get the same experience if I didn't pick any preferences at all but those were just my preferences and my preferences worked out because they made a therapist they found me a therapist which fits my all of my preferences and she was basically telling me that she uses a cognitive behavioral behavioral therapy so basically based off your mind you learn that in nursing school and mental health that like there are different type of therapies she just does CBT you know changing your thoughts forming your thoughts to basically shape your mind and um we were just talking about certain things we just had an introductory section she was like well why are you here which i kind of included in a little clip for a second um and i was just telling her like i you know i just finished nursing school and all these other things that are just stressors in my life right now and the first thing that we touched on today was obviously like my failures and things like that and that was great and she was like well i failed my boards three times before i got to become a therapist and she was like it was just really stressful for me at the time so I definitely understand 
and one thing that helped her was just like she was like a day before my exam I went and booked a hotel and I just you know just had the day for myself and I took it easy and I really didn't look over anything it's like oh my god I was literally thinking of getting a hotel room and she was like you should do it like if that's something that you feel like you should do to kind of just ground yourself and she also taught me grounding techniques which I had never actually previously used I've heard of them but I never actually knew what it was so grounding techniques when I'm feeling anxious in regards to like studying and things like that um, she was like we're gonna do the five four three two one method so like I want you to sit right here in this moment and tell me five things that you can see tell me four things that you can feel tell me three things that you can hear two things that you can smell and one thing that you can taste and um, just going through that it puts you back in the moment and in the present and it's like why am I letting these things freak me out about the future or about the past because right now I'm living in this moment right now what's happening right now right now I feel this going on around me right now I hear this going on around me and it just brings you to the present and it grounds you and it was great and so I'm really excited to be looking forward to these like different type of uh, strategies that I can use to kind of better myself and I can't wait to let you guys know how it goes. If you guys want to learn more about BetterHelp, you guys can look in my description box. I will leave everything down below. Honestly, I think it's the best thing that I've been using so far. And I'm just so excited for the journey ahead. We've got months and months and months of therapy, I feel like, coming. But you know what? Like, I'm just, I'm so happy for it. And another thing that she mentioned, she was like, therapy is not going to last always. Like, you're not going to need me all the time. There comes a point to where you're not going to need therapy. Like, we're going to go ahead and we're going to address your goals and see what you want to get out of therapy. And then once that happens, like, you might not need it anymore. Like, you're going to be sufficient to feel like you can cope with the things that you want to cope with and whatever. And that's why I told her what my goals were. Like, I want to just be more confident about X, Y, and Z, about certain things that are going on in my life. And I want to be able to cope with a lot of things that are going on in my life and not just go over them, but actually get through them. And nursing school kind of masked a lot of that for me because I was like I don't have time to go through things I have time to get over things I have time to experience it and then leave it right there because I got an exam next week <laughs> so I to tell you guys all about better help and I would definitely keep you guys in the loop and be open and real and raw and true with my journey and I feel like I've done that so so much this far and I just can't wait to be more open about everything else so cheers to that but today is I'm done dog sitting we're just at the dog park right now. Um, but yeah, pretty much today I'm gonna be done dog sitting. I'm gonna be heading home sometime soon. Um, getting back to the regular scheduled program. But overall, I've got a few practice questions to do today. Same old, same old, same old. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to always be kind, love yourself and others, and always go out and try your best. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.